All right, so we're back with uh, part two of the tutorial. Um, I want to get into this window here. Uh, basically, like I said before, these are all four separate os oscillators, and each one's kind of like a separate uh, sound generator. So we're going to work with one just to kind of get into how each one of these works, because once you understand how one works, they all work the same. So let's get into the attack, decay, release, and sustain. Um, basically, what you got here, as I'm clicking, you'll see the yellow dot or the yellow uh, square. That's how you know what I'm talking about. This is basically the start point of a sound. So when you play in this situation, when I click here, it takes no time at all for the volume to get to the peak level. So think of this kind of as volume from, from down to up. And then from left to right is time. So if I play this, it, it's going to immediately give me s sound and top level sound. So it, it hits its peak level and just stays there. Now, as I drag this over in time, and down here you can actually see how far we're dragging this over. Let's drag it over something noticeable. There we go, for about a second. So. Now the sound's going to fade in. It's going to take it a little over a second to get from its lowest volume to its highest volume. So let's hear how that sounds. So that's really good for string fade-ins and any type of fade-in sound that you want. Now what's happening here is now you've got this long fade-in and then it just pretty much stays at this level until you let go of the key. So what if we wanted to um, have it just kind of come up and then fall off? We could do that. With this here, as I move it left to right, you'll see the decay length change. And as I go up and down, you'll see the sustain. So if I bring this all the way down here, what this would mean is once it reaches its peak, it's going to decay in 1.87 seconds. So let's hear what that sounds like. Just like so. And it doesn't have to drop back to zero. If you want, you can have it maybe half volume here. And then you've got it, it'll kind of peak, and then it'll stay at a lower volume, kind of like this. Just like that. So that's, uh, that's how the attack, decay, and sustain work. Now the release is basically how long uh, the sound's going to last after you let go of the keys. Right now, it lasts for about 50 milliseconds, which isn't very long at all. But as we stretch this over, we'll make it long, like 5 seconds. Now, as I hit the key, I'll tell you when I let go, and you'll hear it fade. Okay, now I'm going to let go of the key and it fades out slowly. So that's basically how the envelope works. And what's uh, cool about this is once you make an envelope you like, you can actually copy uh, it to, let's say, sound B. We'll turn that on. I could just right click on here and copy oscillator from A. And there we go. We've copied that same slope. Not in all cases are you going to want to do that. It just depends on the type of sound that you're trying to make. But I wanted to talk about that a little bit. So let's go down to this area again. And um, we'll get into the wave here. And the wave, basically, this is the basic sound that you start with. So in this case, you've got a basic sine wave. If we were to go to a saw wave, it's going to have a different sound altogether. go ahead and uh, change this back to an immediate attack just so we can get to the sound. Just like so. And for example these, the higher the number the more complex the sound or the more overtones you have. So a saw 32 is going to sound a lot more complex. A lot more beefy. Now let's get into, now Now phase is basically, you're not going to notice phase on one sound, really. But um, 
phasing is um, basically the way the wave works. It's either going to go from low to high and back down to low, or from high to low and back down uh, and back up. Um, so by, by putting two sounds out of phase with each other, you can actually uh, kind of affect the way that that sounds. Something to experiment with. Um, let's get into the loop mode. This is kind of important here. So loop mode is, is a really cool thing. Um, and I'll demonstrate it by making just a quick quick attack, quick decay sound like this. Great. Now, if I hit loop, it's going to repeat that. So after it decays, it'll, it'll go back and loop. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and turn this B off. I think we're getting an overtone, yeah. Just like that. And then as I drag this decay back, that could actually speed up. So depending on this type of sound. Or you can speed it up or slow it down over here with the time. That'll speed it up. That'll slow it down. And um, the time velocity is really cool because as I turn this up, then I can control the speed by how hard I hit the key. So if I hit the key kind of soft, it's going to go slower. And as I hit it harder, it's going to go faster or slower depending on how hard I hit the key. So that's a pretty cool feature. Velocity is basically, um, it's, it's going to kind of give you more of a dynamic range between loudest and softest. As I turn this up, you'll notice a, a louder sound overall. And as I turn it down, it's a little bit more sensitive. So that's basically this in a nutshell the basic things you want to know. Over here you've got Q which is kind of like a, a quality key so it's a little more lo-fi or hi-fi. Um, oscill oscillation velocity its kind of the same as, as time velocity in a way. It controls the oscillation depending on how hard you hit the key. So that's what you have there and as you go into all your separate sounds and put it together, once again, we get a full sound of an, of an organ or whatever. With our weird loops, looped uh, sound here. So let's go ahead and turn that off and we can pull this back up. And uh, so that's basically your, your, op your operator oscillators uh, in a nutshell. Next we'll come back and we'll get into some of these uh, global effects here.